life's words from her lips. I see a crystal stream flowing, feel a gentle breeze blowing, and it's worth every say thank you for the food. Y'all got killed us eating. And, uh, but uh, we, you can tell we we struggling with eating, you know. Uh, I told Shane when he come on board with us full time, I said, I may not be able to pay you much, buddy, but I guarantee you we'll always eat good. And, uh, he said, that's good enough. And, uh, but it's been an honor to be here. And uh, you got that thing say? All right. Thank you. Sunset in the western sky. If he could make the sun rise up in the east. If he could rise up from the grave after dying on a tree, then I know Jesus can take care of me. If he can. can take care of me. Aren't you glad he takes care of his own? If he could save the Hebrew children from the fire. If he could rescue Daniel from the lion's teeth. And for the children of Israel, he can part the Red Sea. And I know Jesus can take care of me yeah. if he can walk on the water where I am. If he can calm the raging storm when my ship is going down. can take care of me. Doesn't matter what you need tonight. Doesn't matter what you're going through. I promise you. If he's helped others, he can help you. Amen. Do you believe that tonight? If he can walk on the water where I am. If he can calm the raging storm when my ship is going.
was proud He thought he had me forever bound But in the still of the night The sweet spirit came Tell me I was lost But there was a Savior who would say sinful man years from now or 50 years from now, there ain't nobody going to remember. Yeah. 
it. And I'm just, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with excited about that. I do too. But if you can get excited about that, don't get mad at me when I get excited about what the Lord Here's what he said, I'm going away to prepare you a place. And if I go, and he did, I will come again, and he will. This song said, brand new song we're singing, a wonderful land. I'm thankful. I'm going to a wonderful Amen. land. Amen. Amen. story of old of a city somewhere with a street of pure gold mansions so grand what a beautiful land by the river of life where all the saints who have gone on before standing there waiting on that blessed shore beckoning come to a place of no pain and no more strife
What's he done that you can praise him for tonight? Amen. We don't have to go to hell. Services a year when I even pastored, and uh, but I pastored 22 years. And, uh, but in this last five years, going into our sixth year, uh, God has richly blessed us. Uh, we last year we had 366 folks accept Christ as our first Savior. That's the main. That's the main thing. And then uh, in this past year, we just went on our sixth uh, radio station. We were daily on radio. Uh, internet and our airways. We reach over 5 million homes every day by radio. And uh, I never dreamed that something like that would happen. Of course, one of my buddies told me I had a radio face. <laughs> Y'all pretty good. And, uh, but uh, <clears throat> then uh, we have the uh, Hope uh, Cafe where uh, tomorrow night, every Thursday night, they, they feed those. Last year, that was our new ministry last year that we picked up supporting that. And thank you for your giving to that. Uh, I, I promise you, every penny of that will go to help feed those kids there in Cincinnati. 
and parents and homeless people. And then, of course, the prayer field ministry, we have that. Uh, that we are able to reach out and help folks. And uh, so if you're uh, supporting, then Shane, uh, he travels with us full time. And he's, he's married and has a wife and two kids. And uh, so we, we allow him to go home a couple of days a week. And, uh, of course, uh, Mom and I just keep on uh, trucking. We just uh, uh, go home most of the time. And uh, we'll leave and go to Kentucky tomorrow. And as a matter of fact, I think the Parsons are going to be with us uh, Friday night in Hines, Kentucky. Anybody ever been to Hines, Kentucky? Yeah, me and Kenny, that's what I figured. You ought to go there before you go to heaven. Don't make the eye, though, or you'll be gone. <laughs> we'll be in Hines, Kentucky Friday, and I'll be there Saturday night and Sunday morning. Go home and, and then start another meeting. And then in a couple of weeks, we'll be in Mississippi. So we travel every week, and everything that we do, everything that we do, uh, we do on faith. Uh, we don't. Uh, we don't ask anybody anything. They uh, they'll say, "How much do you charge to come?" Well, we don't charge. Well, what do you need? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know what I need that week. And uh, but God is faithful. And God is supplied. So let me say this before I get to preaching. <clears throat> and uh, I, I I forgot it every every night. But back on our table. There is a notebook, and uh, if you would like to receive our newsletter, it's free also. If you'd like to receive our newsletter, every month we send out a newsletter uh, to let people know what's going on in the ministry, where we're going to be that month, and uh, just to keep you informed. And what we do to ask, if you get it, put it on your refrigerator. Because that's where you go the most. <laughs> and you'll look at that and maybe wish for a prayer. And then if God can touch somebody's heart, and I, I, I would never ask nobody if you're given uh, to help others, you need to do that. But if somebody is uh, seeking to maybe help a ministry, uh, I appreciate we appreciate it. And uh, my, I, I don't normally say this, but my radio, just my radio this year will cost me twenty five thousand dollars. And uh, but the Lord's faithful. And how does He do it? He does it just a little bit at a time. Yeah. That's the way He does. It. Yeah. We have we have some folks that are, are praying tonight across this country that sends us five dollars every month as faithful as the month comes, and that's what keeps us going. So we appreciate your giving. We appreciate you helping us at the table, and uh, we love the Lord. If you don't get anything else out of what we do, we love serving Him, Amen. and we love people. Don't you just like people? Amen. Amen. Somebody we've taught me said, it is a shame, though, that kids grow up to be people. <laughs> and, uh, these uh, girls and these grandkids, all these kids running around here, I, I've had a good time with them. And where's Jaden? Is Jaden here tonight? Come up here, buddy. Bring your Bible with you. I want, I want to. <laughs> Jaden, Oh, Jaden gave his heart to Jesus last night. While everything, see, sometimes while a lot of things are going on, sometimes uh, little fellas might get missed, but God didn't miss it. And, uh, he gave, thank you, buddy. He gave his heart to Jesus. So uh, I see Miss Teresa after the service and have her give you five dollars. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> my daddy says son you need to stop that well uh, I know where to stop I think you ought to smile Amen. Amen. I, I don't know about you we travel so many places and in those places I see so many people enduring their salvation instead of enjoying yeah. their salvation yeah. Yeah. salvation isn't the thing you have to do now I've read the Bible okay the Bible says those that endure to the end the same shall be saved. But you need to understand what that endurance means. That means you're going to have troubles but you can make them through. Amen. You can even shout in the midst of your troubles. Amen. 
Amen. I, I ain't saying it's easy because I, I, I have the same things you have and we have the same face the same things, but you can still shout. See, if your life is predicated upon happiness, you're going to be in trouble. Amen. See, I ain't always happy, but I still have joy in my heart. Amen. And that's what I lean to. That's what I trust in because happenings around you sometimes uh, will make you just want to get away. Is that a nice way to say it? Come on, brother. Because you don't want to do something, and everybody in this building, in that situation, is capable of doing something that they don't want to do or wouldn't normally do. But sometimes, if we're not careful, this flesh will get us in trouble. Amen. Amen. I want to read just two scriptures tonight, and uh, if you're here this evening, I'll say this, if you want to come on and get saved tonight, we'll just pray with you and shout around. Amen. Huh? Anybody want to come? Somebody said, why would you say that? Brother Parsons, Brother Kenny and I, we were in a camp meeting last year and on Sunday morning, I got up to preach. I was preaching Sunday morning and I asked if anybody wanted to get saved, come on, we'd rather pray with them and preach to them. And about four pews back on the right side, a young man in his early 20s just got up and walked up to the altar and stood there. It, I, and it's a shame, but it kind of shocked me. <laughs> so I got to thinking, the Lord said, well, that's what you asked, wasn't it? And he got saved. And they yeah. baptized him that night or the next night. So God, you know, you don't have to wait on the altar call. You don't have to wait on the preacher. You don't Amen. have to wait on the... The moment he speaks to you, that's when you can get saved. Amen. Amen. Isaiah chapter 7. We'll look at verse 14. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Hold your Bibles open. I'll read another verse after I read this one. You there? Say amen. amen. Therefore, the Lord Himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call His name Emmanuel. Now turn over to chapter 9. If you got the right kind of Bible, it might even be on the next page, right across from that page like it is mine, but it may be a turn page. 9, chapter 9, verse 6. See, in chapter 7, he says, the Lord shall give you a sign. Yeah. Now notice what he says in chapter 9. For unto us a child is born. Uh, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. If the Lord would help me tonight, just in a few minutes, uh, I want to preach on this subject. Oh, what a Savior. Oh, what a Savior. Lord, we love you. We thank you for this place again. Thank you for your people. Thank you for your power and your presence. Uh, I ask you, God, now to help your preacher, Lord. Uh, eclipse me in the shadow of the the Holy Ghost in Calvary. Uh, uh, Lord, let me say only that which you have me to say. Uh, and God, tonight, if you touch the hearts, uh, uh, Lord, you speak to hearts. Uh, as I preach to the outward, you speak to the inward. Uh, and I pray, oh God, uh, uh, tonight that you would crown this service. Uh, uh, Lord, I would offer service. Uh, and God, uplift your people. Uh, help those that are having battles. Uh, uh, Lord, be with those that are lost. Be close to them. Uh, I know you'll say them. Yes. If they'll come, we'll ask it in the most precious name of Jesus. Uh, we ask, Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings. When I looked at this, and I, it's, it's a common passage, but I have nothing new under the sun. and uh, There is nothing new but to preach Jesus. Amen. And, and uh, you know, I'll be honest with you, I, I like the, the, the Bible and I like what Jesus has to say. And I use some stories and stuff, but you hear so much anymore across our land. Uh, uh, they're trying to take uh, the truth out of it in the fact that God is a God of love, but God also is a God of truth. Amen. He is a God of judgment. Amen. He will judge. But thank you, aren't 
you glad tonight uh, that he sent his son uh, to die for us? Uh, so let's look at four things tonight real quick uh, that I find in these scriptures. Uh, number one, we see the birth uh, of the baby. The birth of the baby. It was preceded. Uh, the Bible said, uh, John, uh, there was a man sent from God uh, whose name was John. And John preached uh, before and made the way. Uh, and he said, there's one coming after me. Uh, some of them looked at him one day and said, well, surely uh, you're the one. He said, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, he said, I'm not the one. Uh, but there's one coming after me. Uh, whose shoe latches I'm not worthy to unloose. Uh, he preceded uh, uh, him. Uh, uh, bless God. Uh, John was born six months earlier. Do you remember they met uh, in the womb? John leaped in the womb and then was born. And what do you mean, preacher? Well, here's what Jesus said about John. He said, of all men, there's been none greater born than John. Now, that puts you in a pretty good class right there. If the Lord says that about you, then it was preluded. His birth was preluded. The angels, while shepherds, abided over their flocks and had settled in for that evening. But man, it would be a night of all nights. It would be a night that would change destiny. It would be a night that would change all things. Because on that night, the Bible said, while shepherds watched over their flocks, behold, an angel appeared and said I fear not I bring you glad tidings of great joy for unto you today in the city of David is born the Savior of the world look up here friend there ain't no one else coming and there ain't no other Savior gonna die oh, when he came the first time he came to the cross oh, when he comes the next time he'll come to a coronation when he came the first he died on a tree. And when he comes the next time, he's coming to raise all of those that believe in his name. And are born again. I say, hallelujah. I'm glad he is the Savior. Then it was proclaimed. It was proclaimed. They took the baby boy, the baby Jesus, to the temple. And there was a good man. A godly man who God had promised through the Holy Ghost uh, that he would not die until he had seen God's salvation. And when they put baby Jesus in his hands, he looked up and said, Thou servant can now go in peace, for I have seen the salvation of the Lord. Can I tell you something tonight, friends? I'm glad it was also a prophesied. As I read in your hearing, behold, a virgin shall conceive now, and bring forth a son. Now let me just show this in in passing. If you may be interested in other religions, all other religions have what they call a Bible or book of the Quran or something of another. But they all of all the religious uh, main books, and ours is the Bible, only the Bible uh, has prophecy and speaks prophecy. No other religion uh, has any prophecy uh, in their religion. Do you know why that is? Because if a man prophesies uh, and it does not come true, uh, he is labeled and considered uh, a false prophet. Uh, oh, bless his name. Uh, I got good news tonight. Uh, hundreds of years before the birth of the baby, God moved upon uh, Isaiah and he said, a virgin shall conceive uh, and bring us fund. Uh, but see, had the prophecy uh, not been fulfilled, uh, we would be lost uh, yet in our sins. So let's move along. Not only do I see the birth of the baby, but I see the burden of the baby. The Bible said and the government shall be upon his shoulders. Now he's not talking about our government. He's actually considering and talking about the law. All was placed upon his shoulders. But my friend, notice this. He is the law. And he did not come away to do away with the law. But that the law through him 
might be fulfilled. Because the Bible says what we lost in the first Adam, we gain in the last Adam. Not the second Adam. He's not as though there'll be a third or a fourth. He is the last Adam. How can you say that, preacher? Because Adam was perfect in the garden. He was perfect in the environment of the garden until he sinned. So Jesus, the Son of God, whoo, hallelujah. I'm Jesus, the Son of God, came to this earth, born of flesh, as Adam was. But yet, he was without a sin. Can I get a hallelujah? Therefore, he is a legitimate sacrifice. He is the legal sacrifice. He is the lasting sacrifice because his blood has been shed once and for all. We want to take a recess right there and shout it out. The burden of the baby, the sins of the world was laid upon him. That you and I who deserve to die lost could be set free. Praise God. Hallelujah. What do you mean? The burden of the baby. John 1.29 says this. Oh, John's out there. He now he probably wouldn't have gotten preached in the free will Baptist. He he wasn't the he wasn't the kind of looking preacher we probably would have. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. I love to spell flex burn, don't you? Somebody said, why did he have to say that because it's the truth? Oh, he went, he, I mean, he didn't have no big church. I mean, here he comes out of the wilderness. I mean, he's got a camel's hair coat on. He's eating a wild locust and honey in one hand and wild locust in the other hand. Yeah. And he comes out of the wilderness preaching, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And he's again baptizing in the river Jordan. And I said it last night, but I don't know what all I said last night. But I'll say it again tonight because it's worth saying. But John looking up, he had told them people, some of them would come. He said, you snakes and vipers, go back and bring something worthy of repentance. But he said to all that come, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But there's one coming after me who I'm going to baptize. I believe he knew it. He said, I ain't even worthy to lose his shoes, but he's going to come and he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Let me tell you something, friend. John did preach about repentance, about water baptism, but he said, there's one coming after me. And Jesus came. And let me tell you something. They can baptize you in every Baptist tree in Lancaster County. They can baptize you in every creek, every But if you ain't born again, baptism it will not get you ahead to heaven within itself. And I believe this. If you get saved, you'll want to get baptized. John said, well, I didn't get baptized in Egypt. Jesus suffered it to be so. I, I think there might have been two there. I don't know. He suffered it to be so, but I know one thing. Jesus was baptized. Yeah. And look up here. Now, he wasn't baptized to be the Christ. He was baptized because he was the Christ. Amen. Amen. Phil told me, I don't think you have to be baptized. I said, well, Jesus thought he did. So Jesus, <laughs> that's, why, that's probably why I used to be a pastor. <laughs> I think I could be a pastor here. No offense, I didn't want to. I'm not a preacher. He just says it like it is. And, and, and it's funny. I, I'm just going to go ahead and say something right here. I, I'm sick to death uh, of these guys uh, getting jealous over everybody. Listen, we're all on the same team. Amen. 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 Oh, well, that preacher over there, man, he beats them to death. Uh, I said, yeah, all 300 of them. Uh, and they're preaching the 10. And they want to talk about the preacher preaching the 3. Listen, now, that, I don't understand that stuff. We all on the same side. Amen. Listen, and if you can't pastor 10, you can't pastor 300. Uh, that's just the way it is. Uh, can I tell you something? And as long as you pastor, people are going to be people. And sheep bite. Yeah. <laughs> so you teeth stop. They don't mean to. It just happens. It just happens. 
Well, I don't know who needed that right there, but I just plowed your corn. <laughs> I just said, just think you was thinking about it. Amen? I, you know, I don't understand why these guys, you know, want to, if God puts his hand on something, I want to bless them. Amen. Because if you bless what God's blessed, here's what the Bible said, God will bless you in blessing them. Amen. And bless you abundantly above that which you can even ask or think. Now, who don't want that kind of blessing? Amen. But the next time I come, Al, which one are you? <laughs> Where's the Angela man? Angela man. Is it as I say it right? Yeah. Angela. You got you never got to put that jars up next time for you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, I looked at her and she had a dollar. That was Aubrey. Where's it? Is it she here tonight? She's in the nursery. She's in the nursery. I hope she hears this. She had a dollar and I, I, I just picked it out of her hand. She said, that's for the missionary. I said, I'm a missionary. She said, no, you ain't. <laughs> I said, well, what am I? what am I? She looked at me. I said, I'm an evangelist. Can you say evangelist? And she's looking at me. I'm getting that dog. And her papa says, say evangelist. She's looked at him. And she looked like that out of her eyes. She said, I'm concentrating. <laughs> Good. Instill it in them. Amen. Amen. See, if you instill it in the young kids, and I, I respect this church for all your young kids are very respectful. If you instill it in them when they're young, to respect the man of God, respect the house Amen. of God, respect the people Amen. of God, there's less likeliness you're going to have to visit them in the pen. Amen. That's just plain. That's just plain preaching, and that's beautiful. Amen. Where are we at? We're on the burden. See, the burden Jesus carried. He carried for us. Now, I can't really wrap this around my head. I try and I, I believe it. But when you, when you think of this verse right here, 2 Corinthians 5.21, here's what it says. For He, mean, meaning God, hath made Him, meaning Jesus, to be sin, be made sin, for us, that we might be made the righteousness of Him in Jesus Christ. Amen. Now that, I'm just going to tell you, that right there, that one verse is enough. Yeah. So let me just translate that in hillbilly preaching. <laughs> that verse means this. God made Jesus to become what I was so that I, through the cross, can become what He is. Amen. 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 Come on. Come on. Huh? Pray. That's why He done that. So what, what I'm telling you, Jesus looked into that bitter cup. He took that burden and He said, Father, is there any other way? And heaven was silent. Have you ever prayed a prayer and you felt like it didn't get above your head? Can I tell you, Jesus has prayed prayers and every time He speaks, the Father has answered you. But when He says, Father, is there any other way? Let this cup pass your knees. The Father was silent. And then He cried out, not my will, but thine be done. Amen. And the angels came <laughs> and ministered unto him. Thank you, Lord. You see, God, if He brings you to it, He'll take you through it. Amen. And many times, the blessing doesn't come till after the confessing is done. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That, that amazes me. So we see the birth of the baby. We see the burden of the baby. Let's talk just a little bit about the battle of the baby. The Bible says in Mark 
1533, And when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. Three hours of total darkness in the middle of the day. At high noon, Jesus has been on the cross three hours. They have walked in ridicule. They have said, if He saved others, and He cannot save Himself. They have looked at Him and said, if you be the Son of God, come down. But see, He knew for this cause came He into the world. And for this end was He born. Come on. And I, I, I'm just going to share with you how I feel when I read the Scriptures. Uh, some have said, and I'm not saying I'm right and they're wrong, but some have said, uh, God put His hand over the sun. May have, I don't know, but some say that nature refused to allow the sun to shine. But here's what I do know. I do know that nowhere in the Bible does God join Himself with darkness. Amen. Amen. Am I right? Nowhere in the lids of that book, the Bible said the light came into the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. That's right. Darkness means judgment. Darkness means evil. But I'm telling you, here's what Preacher Mike thinks about it. I believe at that noon hour, I believe the onslaughts of hell and Satan and evil came against the Son of God in that hour because He who knew no sin was made to be sin. And Satan has been trying to imitate God all of His creation. And when He comes there, He comes in darkness and Jesus Jesus, the Son of God, enters into that darkness of evil and sin and Satan. Or He cannot say, in every way you've been tempted, I have been right. tested. Right. Right. You can't tempt God, but He was tested. That's right. That's God. Man, that's good stuff. Right huh? What do you mean? I'm about to prove it to you. There's three things that happened there. In that darkness, there was a contract that took place. Jesus and the Father entered into a contract or a covenant. You see, here's what we need to understand. The covenant is given between the Father and the Son. You and I are just the beneficiaries Amen. of that covenant. Amen. That's right. Amen. <laughs> huh? So what are you saying? Why was Christ, what's the battle of this Savior? I'll tell you what the battle is. On that cross for the first time in all of time, Jesus Christ, the man, the God-man, has now taken upon Himself. He has now become, according to the Scripture, a curse that we could have eternal life. Amen. And the Bible says that when the ninth hour comes, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Lama Shakmanina, which interpreted means, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Separated from the Father. Separated from the Father. And again, heaven is silent. And Jesus Christ, I thirst that the prophecy may be fulfilled. But thank God He wasn't finished. Come on. Come on. He came out of that darkness. And on that cross. In that last grasp of breath, uh, he cries out, It is finished! Father! <laughs> oh, oh, there he is! Father! Into thy hands I commend my spirit. Hey. <coughs> Hebrews 2 9 said he got it. <coughs> the battle of the baby. But let's move on and get done with this. Oh, what a Savior. Amen. Oh, what a Savior. The burden, the battle. But thank God for the blessing. 
Amen. Because heaven cannot remain silent. Heaven refuses. Angels are looking over the balcony of heaven. At one glimpse on the cross, they could have come and took Jesus back. But He died that you and I could come in to a relationship and come into an adoption and by birth into the family of God and be able to stand and say, I am a child of God. Amen. 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 Come on, Let me just say what it says. Right, First Peter... 1, verse 3 and 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath begotten us again unto a lively hope. <laughs> because of the resurrection of the dead of Jesus Christ. Verse 4, to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, Amen. reserved in heaven. For Amen. Look up here. <coughs> heaven knows I'm coming. Amen. They ain't going to be surprised when I get there. <laughs> my name's in the book. Amen. Amen. My name's been written down. Yeah. Up there. They're, they're acquainted with me. Yeah. Every now and then, I just look up and say, Hey, it's me. Hey. Don't do that every now and then. It feels good to just raise your hands up. Yeah. If, you know, every time I have a need, I come and ask you. But that ain't the only time I come. Yeah, come on. Come on. I come to worship you. Amen. 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 Jackson. He'll be five. He'll be five on that in March. He'll be five in March. And uh, usually if we don't pick them up on the way home, it ain't long home. We ain't hardly got our suitcases into the door so you hear them coming. They come to see Grandpa and Pat. Now Facebook and FaceTime is a pretty amazing thing. It helps in one sense, but it hurts in the other. Because when you have to say bye, you get home sick. But my little grandson, him and I got this little thing, this little deal we do. I'll be, I'll be at the house and he'll be coming over. And you, you can hear, the first of all, you hear the garage door ring. <coughs> he is intrigued with hitches and buttons. It's, it's amazing. And so he raises the garage door. Got a pad, he'll push the numbers in. Hit the thing in the garage door. So I hear the garage door ring. Then the door opens. <laughs> and then you hear, hear that little feet yeah. come back through the hall. We got our little floors. So I'll be wherever I'm at. He'll run up to me and come up and just run up against me and I'll, I'll say, where's Jackson at? He'll hit me, man, he'll pound me. I'll say, where's Jackson? And he'll pull on my shirt my breeches and I'll, where's Jackson? And about the third time he'll say, I hear. <laughs> and he does everything to get my attention. And I try to avoid him laughing at him. To get my attention on purpose. But there's one thing. There's one thing. If he does, I cannot resist him. Come on. When he has exhausted every way he thinks of getting my attention, finally, here's what he does. He just goes. <laughs> and he knows when he lifts up those hands that Pat's going to reach down and pick him up and put him in my arms and play with him and bless his little heart. He's ticklish all over. You can't touch him without him laughing. And I go to tickle him and he'll laugh and he'll laugh and he'll laugh and, and he'll laugh and he nearly loses his breath. And, and I'll say, say uncle, say uncle. He'll say, no, no. I, I thought he was stubborn. Because he, I mean, I've actually watched him gasp for a breath and, and I'm tickling him so, so much and and he will not say no. <laughs> and then finally, 
Pat gets tired. <laughs> so I, I set him down. And then he'll run off to find his granny. And one day, Kenny, after the hundreds of times I'd done that, one day I set him down and he took off running and I thought, you stubborn man. And God said, you're wrong. I said, I'm wrong. He said, yeah, you're wrong. I said, you won't say nothing. He said, that's what I'm saying. I said, what do you mean? Well, he said, you see, he knows if he says uncle that you're going to stop loving on him, you're going to stop playing with him. Amen. And he don't want that to happen. So guess what?
<laughs> and I'm the pastor. I can do that. <laughs> Tell you, it's been good. Amen. It's probably one of the best revivals we've had in a long time. Amen. I'm telling you, I just like it when God shows up. Amen. We can come and have a series of meetings, and sometimes that's all right. But I'd rather have Jesus show up. Amen. Amen. Appreciate you being faithful. Appreciate your attendance. Appreciate your prayers. Uh, now's the time for the service. Preacher Mike gets all the bragging on and all the pats on the back. I'm asking Miss Teresa if she would come up here and also Shane to come up here. Now, Shane, this is for your wife. This is not for you. Don't come up here. I don't know which is which. I'm glad they did. I can tell which one's mine. You want to be at the marriage supper or what? This is just to let you know we appreciate you. I appreciate you. You said your wife, we know we appreciate her. She's on, she's staying home. Doing the hard stuff. While you out doing the God's work. And that's that's a blessing. Yes. Amen. Thank and uh, Thank listen, visitor table, you know what's back there, you've already heard it all. He's not selling CDs, he's taking donations. If you can give, that's great. He said if you don't have the money, get one. I'm gonna tell you folks, you don't see that all the time. Four hundred thousand. We distribute. I can't say we give away. We have. We distributed four hundred thousand pieces of music free of charge. Amen. Amen. God, God's good. I'm telling Amen. you. Amen. I ain't got much, but I'm rich. <laughs> yeah. You just mentioned it. See it here. I got a pretty gold cane for you. <laughs> <laughs> and let me let me say this. I have to this. I forget. If if you write a check, it is a tax deduction. We are a 5013 C ministry. So if you write a check, or if you put cash in it, you have to put cash in an envelope and put your name on it, and we can we, you'll get a receipt back from the ministry. Our kids and uh, take care of the office while we're gone. Uh, and uh, you'll get a receipt back for that. So if somebody's got four or five grand you don't need, just <laughs> <laughs> might as well ask for four grand, four hundred. <laughs> if anybody needs uh, tithe an envelope, if you want to use an envelope, there are some envelopes yes. back in our foyer on the right hand side. What do you say? It's been a great revival. I've had several people say, I appreciate it. I wish you couldn't end. Well, it don't have to. You come back Sunday morning. Amen. I guarantee you the same God that's been here this week, he's going to be back here Sunday morning. Amen. How you know, preacher? He was here last Sunday morning. He was here Sunday morning before that. Amen. I love you. Anything on anybody's heart for me, just make your service. Take care of my buddy. It's good to have Brother Kenny Parsons with us. He's no stranger. Uh, they're going to be back with us, I think, in August. Um, but uh, you pray for them. I'm asked Brother Kenny if he would dismiss the service for us. Well,